Hey, what's up? You're back at the Trailer Project, and I'm Alex Miller, writer for Battleship Pretension and Film Inquiry. Um, so a quick story. Uh, way back in the early days of lockdown, I was out of work and dying to see all the movies I could. Um, so I took it upon myself to reach out to uh, distributors, studios, uh, filmmakers, whatever, to get as many screeners as I could for everything that was on my potential watch list. After all, what else is there to do but watch and review movies? Um, well, some screeners are got, um, and others I did not. Um, luckily, I was able to review one of the most coveted titles on my watch list, today's film, Rodney Asher and David Lawrence's The El Duce Tapes. Um, I simply emailed Rodney Asher and politely asked if I could review his latest documentary, and he simply replied, if you want to spend quarantine with El Duce, be my guest. Um, well, it was an apt message. Uh, not a lot of people would want to spend much time with El Duce, the uh, loud, misogynistic, depraved frontman from the shock rock group The Mentors. So why make a documentary about someone like that? Well, that's what makes Rodney Asher such a compelling director. Uh, not only is he adept at examining his subjects, but more importantly, he examines the rippling effect and influence of artists, their art, and media culture as a whole. In films like Room 237 and The Nightmare, he goes one step beyond the standard role of a documentarian and creates an aesthetically inspired mosaic of mixed media, found footage, dramatic recreations, and archival materials to weave together this hypnotic vision that is quite unlike anything else going on in modern documentary filmmaking. Um, but enough from me. I think this new trailer, wonderfully assembled by the fine folks down at Arrow Films, uh, does an even better job summarizing the film. So let's check out the latest trailer for Rodney Asher's latest film, The El Duce Tapes. You see, I love this opening title crawl. It feels like the beginning of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And you're probably wondering what kind of music documentary has the feel of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, what makes the El Duce Tapes so great is that this is anything but your naval gazy rock doc. From the outset, it might seem like a departure from the likes of Room 237 or The Nightmare. However, there's this atmospheric dread and cryptic imagery associated with the film's origins. It almost evokes a horror film. In some ways, the inception of the El Duce tapes feels like a creepypasta, or better yet, a found footage feature. And in the best tradition of Asher's work, there is a mounting and hypnotic sense of terror that accumulates with the movie's momentum, and is most effectively rendered as the film finds parallels between the Reaganoid ethics and values of the band's heyday and the regressive nosedive that precipitated in the wake of the Trump administration regarding race and gender. That VHS formatting style isn't the trailer, but the film itself. Um, Asher uh, effectively captures the VHS aesthetic, and it makes the film all the more engaging. Into people's face with this pee balloon. It's as easy as that. The footage is both difficult and challenging, but a relentlessly compelling portrait of a man who wanted to be hated. But Asher and co-director Lawrence know that there's more to the story. What's that like not having a home? Makes me want to drink more. The film puts us right up and close and personal with El Duce. It's almost like you can smell the backwash of 40 ounce malt liquor on his breath and see the crusted vomit stuck in his beard. But great art isn't always comforting, and there's real depth here. So much so that it rivals Todd Phillips' Gigi Allen documentary Hated, and maybe even the likes of The Filth and the Fury. Uh, this has been Alex from The Trailer Project. Thanks for listening. We'll check you later.